Welcome back to the Fearless Future Podcast. We're your host, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. Today, we're talking about nosy neighbors. Oh, boy. Everybody's got them. Nosy neighbors when you are renovating a house. That's what we're talking about. Not just your nosy neighbors, but nosy neighbors when you're renovating a house. And we're going to talk about some pros and cons and what you should or shouldn't do and what a lot of our experiences have been with nosy neighbors, or as we call them, Ken and Karens of the neighborhood, <laughs> right? That's the new, the new name for nosy neighbors. So I think we should jump in and talk. We have a lot of experience with this. And I think we should jump in and talk about it right out of the gates. I think the number one question is, when you are renovating a house, should you introduce yourself as the new investor, owner, slash flipper, or whatever you're going to do with the property, to yeah, the neighbors? I, I think there's pros and cons to introducing yourself versus just, you know, like seeing what happens. Um, I am much more an advocate of introducing yourself to the neighbors because I think you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And so you can stave off any problems before they happen. So I, that that's that's my yeah advice. So I think that what we're talking about too, people have to understand that when you go in and you start renovating a house, you're going to open up, you know, some cans of worms sometimes. Anytime, whether you introduce yourself to the neighbor, the nosy neighbors or, or not. not, sometimes neighbors are happy that you're there because it's yes. been a problem house for a long time if it's been vacant or if it's had problems or if it's had um you know sometimes there's been horrible tenants that live there so the neighbors hated them the house might be run down and bringing down property values and sometimes you have a neighbor that wanted to buy that house themselves didn't couldn't either couldn't afford it or didn't know it went for for sale because we bought it off market before everybody knew about it and they wanted to buy it for their family for their friend whatever so they're bitter at you and so they might not be as nice of a neighbor as they could be, and they might cause a lot of problems for you along the way. Sometimes they're just curmudgeons and just, you know, want to find fault with anything and everything. They, they call that a Karen, right? So Karen or a Ken, we've dealt with plenty of those. They just want to be miserable because that's some people are just retired. They sit home all day and they're just miserable. Yeah. And not even retired. You don't have to be retired to be a miserable prick. You can oh, just no, be a miserable we've, prick. We've had some neighbors that were just miserable. <laughs> yeah. Just sit home all day and think of all the ways they can just, you know, annoy you. And you, you try to be nice, right? So you're trying to be nice. You try and do things for them. You try and help wherever you can and try and be a good uh, new neighbor. But sometimes they start taking advantage of you. And I think it's important to know kind of some of these stories as we go. I think, number one, you have to use your personality to your advantage. Yeah. Like I I always like going over to the next door neighbor and saying, you know, hey, we just bought this house. I just wanted to let you know, you know, over the next few weeks, it might be a little crazy here. There's going to be a lot of contractors, um, you know, but we're 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 going to flip the house. We're going to make it beautiful. We're going to find you a new great neighbor. So, you know, if you can do us a favor, keep an eye on the house, you know, let us know if anything you know, looks out of place or anything, you know, sketchy is going on. Yes, that can backfire on you too, because then they have your number. But I just think in more cases than not, it's better to put your best foot forward and be friendly and take that approach. Well, now it's time for another stupid human. Well, we always say stupid human comment or just a stupid human. So we found (laughs) something online that really is appropriate for this episode on nosy neighbors. And some people take it way too far. Check this lady out. This crazy neighbor did not like that. This guy put up a privacy board on the fence and she wanted it off. Yeah, call him. That's my property. Oh boy, the link some people will go to. That took some audacity, actually. Yeah, I mean, cut the neighbor's fence down because she didn't <laughs> like it. I'm sure there's more to that backstory. I'm sure they have a lot of history, but oh my God, that's how that's how bad it can get. Something she didn't even have to look at herself. It was on the other side no. of the fence. So there you go for another episode of Stupid Humans that are online. Crazy. All right, let me give some advice here to people that have never done this before. If you've never done it, you're going to be now door knocking, right? That's what you're going to do if you've never done it before. It's not comfortable knocking on someone's door that you have no idea who they are or if they like you or don't like you. And so I think it's important when you knock on the door, always take a few steps back down and step off the steps so you're not confronting them when they open the door because they don't, they may not want to talk to you. They might be excited to meet you, but they may not. You should be prepared for that when you open the door. So when you do that, you know, I tend to say, hey, listen, just like you said, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're going to be renovating the house. But I think it's imperative that you are careful what you say about the house because they could have been very close to that neighbor. That right. may have been their next door neighbor. It may have been a house or two down where, wherever you choose to introduce yourself. It's imperative that you don't say, well, that house was left in rough shape. And they yeah. say, that was my sister. Yeah. And she died in the house. Or, or even just yeah. a neighbor they cared for. Correct. You well, know? my point is there yeah. could be there could be a tie. Yeah. There could be a, a personal connection to them. Yep. So always be careful not to badmouth the house or say, Yeah, we bought this house. 
The dump. <laughs> it was a real dump. The people lived there. The people lived there before were just dirt bags. Yeah. Yeah. That was my parents. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden you put your foot in your mouth and they're going to, they will not be your advocate no. any longer. So just be very careful when you're, when you're doing that. I think you have to decide number one, when you buy a house, do you want to be proactive or reactive? I think that's a very good point. And I, I think by introducing yourself up front, you're being very proactive. Right. And let's describe reactive. Reactive is now you did not introduce yourself to them and they're pissed off that you have a dumpster in the driveway that they think is now infringing on their property. So they call code enforcement. And all of a sudden you're in a pissing battle with a neighbor that you could have maybe avoided had, had you, you just went over been friendly up front. Just yeah. friendly up front. So there's proactive versus reactive. And again, not every neighbor is a jerk. Right. Most, I would say, are not. Right. Most are happy that you're there. Most are happy that you're going to renovate the house, make it look good. But if a renovation goes too long, that can be a problem too. So let's talk about the Ken we had. I don't know what his real name was, but the guy up at the property up there in Saratoga. Yeah. And so that property, without saying the street name, we had a home that we purchased that was in rough shape and we decided to renovate the home. So we went in and did demolition because you didn't need a permit for demolition. Well, so we did it on a, the guys happened to go on a Saturday. It was just, just the way it worked out. And so they did that and they put everything in the dumpster. And lo and behold, the neighbor, we found out a month later, across the street, two houses down, he was that old retired prick that just had to just cause trouble. And he called and called and called till code enforcement came out, went in our dumpster, pulled out the sheetrock and said, this is full of asbestos, which I'd never heard of in my life. No. And we, is, we've done hundreds of flips hundreds in upstate that, New York yes. and never encountered that. Never encountered that. And they said, this, we said, there's what? This is asbestos. We had to tarp off the... We had to tarp it up and it was going to cost over $30,000 to have it remediated. Remediated, And I couldn't think of that word. Thank you. Couldn't have to have remediated. And that wasn't including all the extra work we had to do on top of that. So right. we didn't have any money in because the budget. Because we had to, to resheet rock the entire house. Yes. And we didn't have money in the budget for it. It was right. supposed to be kind of a quick flip. It was just, we had just taken out a little bit of sheet rock. It wasn't the whole thing. And so it was like, you got to be kidding me. So we had to, we had to re remedy the, or remediate the whole house. I think it added like $50,000 to the budget, yeah, which we did not have. We were in a situation, we didn't have the extra money. We're like, so, so it had to sit. So now that idiot made it so that thing full of asbestos had to sit there for like five months because and, we, we couldn't afford to move it. And that would have happened regardless if we would have in introduced ourselves or not. Like he just was that kind of guy. And sometimes you're going to end up with Correct. a guy like but that. We couldn't move that dumpster. We couldn't, we couldn't move the dumpster and the dumpster guy got furious at us and said, well, now I need my dumpster back. And I said, I can't move it because the town that, yeah. won't let us move it. And we had used him for years. We yep. had done thousands of dumpsters with him over the years. Yeah. Plus, yeah. That'd be probably over a thousand dumpsters with him. And so I'm sure I'm trying to think of the numbers in my head, but a lot. Yeah. And so we had used him for many years and he was pissed. He came down to the office. He got right in my face. I said, dude, I don't know what you want me to do. The town won't let us take it away because of this neighbor. Right. This neighbor caused a problem. And so he caused a problem for himself and the whole neighborhood. And it had to sit for like six months. Then the winter came. We couldn't work. on. Oh, it's just a just a disaster. So that was not a fun experience that we had to deal with. And again, I wouldn't have thought to go to somebody two houses down and across, across the, the street. street. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought to say hi to them. You know, you certainly could. You could walk around and say, hey, listen, if you need to see anything with the house, let me know. But that was not. Uh, and some some people are just psycho. Like like that guy would have caused a problem whether you introduced yourself or not. Right. He just was that kind of person. Yep. And I don't think I realized how many weird people there are in the world until oh, social there's media. Some, there's like some, like there's you some see some people's comments and stuff on different things, and you're like, hence why we do a segment called Stupid Human Comments or true. Stupid Humans, right? That's what we do during the during the podcast. Because there's a lot but of yeah, them out some there. people are just weird or miserable or a combination of both, and yeah. so so. Again, that was a situation where we had to be reactive. Right. The other one I can think of that we recently had to deal with, not so recent, but we had another home situation that was really run down. And this house was, it was unlivable. It was um, condemned. Condemned. So we bought it in a nice neighborhood and we fixed it. Well, the next door neighbor, she was horrible. I will agree. Horrible. And she... Took to social media her little crusade because she clearly has no life. Yes, there was a neighborhood group on social media. Yes. And so she and went on there and started bashing us. Now, mind you, during construction, she's bashing us. Yeah. And, and mind you, it was a very unsafe place full of bugs. It was a horrible thing. It was overgrown. It was, there were holes in the floor. I mean, and the it, roof. And the roof. It was and, disgusting. I mean, I wouldn't want that house next door to me looking like that. And all she did there, there was. There must have been rats going through the yard. Oh, like I'm the sure. grass was super high. All and, she did on this group was 
bitch and piss and moan about about our company, signature yeah. home buyers. And because it's a private group, we didn't see it. So we didn't know this was going on. And but but then not too long after we we turned it, we because we had to go so far over budget on that house. Remember? Yeah. We we went way over budget because she also got town town involved and the, the town we had permits. They knew what we were doing, but you know, when you have a when you have a pain in the butt neighbor, just whatever. So we end up putting a lot more money in that house and it wasn't going to work as a flip anymore because we got upside down. So th- right. that's an episode, you know, if you, if you subscribe to our podcast, you can learn about all these mistakes we've made so you don't make them yourself. So please make sure you subscribe. But we, on this house, we said, okay, we have to find a different exit strategy. So we decided to hold the house and take advantage of appreciation over time. But the mortgage payment was going to be higher than we wanted for regular rents. So we decided to turn to a short-term rental. Right. And hence... Then she went to social media again oh. and posted, oh my gosh, they're turning our neighborhood into a hotel. And, you know, she just went on and on about how horrible it was and how, and this is a really nice Airbnb. You oh, know, it's not, it like, it's not like it's a fully attracts. furnished, it's beautiful. beautiful, four bedrooms, two baths, oh. you know, and, and, and it's a, n- a neighborhood. So th- there were a lot of people that went on there that were um, sticking up for us, which was really nice to see. Do you remember how we were notified though? Yeah. A friend told us. So Rain. It, we, we have a charity we've supported for years in upstate New York called things of my very own. You're looking for a charity to support. Please look it up. They're things amazing. Of my very own. Yes. They help children that are in horrible situations in life. And rain has been just an amazing human being. And she is, uh, she is an amazing she's human a survivor being. herself yep. from abuse. And so she has turned around. So, so we became very close. We just love her. She actually is in that group and yeah. she sent me messages said, Glenn, this girl is ripping you apart on social media. And I'm like, huh? So you, you asked to join the group and they let you. I got in the group yes. and I remember crafting a reply. Like I really took my time. It was so well thought it out. It wasn't the first thought that came to mind. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but it, but I, I have to kind of pat myself on the back here. It was a very well thought out reply, but I can also remember how much anxiety that gave me at the moment. I was furious. Oh, like yeah. I, I wanted to go over there and she was ripping us as a slumlord scumbags. She was just attacking us as a, as a as company people and a company. And, yeah, and here I'm thinking everything. we took this horrible deplorable, unsafe home next to you and turn it into a beautiful home. And we decided to turn to a short term rental. And you just, you're just going to keep ripping us. Yep. It's the same person that bitched about the track, the tra- the uh, construction vehicles being in near and, next to her yard, not in her yard. Oh next yeah. To and, her then, yard. and then her husband would park his big on truck our lawn. on our lawn and broke all the curb off. Cause he had yeah. some big diesel truck, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but I can remember like being over there staging the Airbnb and she'd be peering out of the blinds and oh, just a, just, yeah. you know, clearly, clearly just no life, like yeah. just a miserable, miserable human being that has nothing to do but make other people's lives miserable because they want to, they want to suck people down in the sludge with them. That goes on for a little while. And not too long ago, a couple years ago, a year ago, I think we were in Florida. I think we were. I don't remember exactly when, but she, she started again. And she started ripping. And now this time, a bunch of people were a lot of people defended us. And this time I was in the group. I got I got let in the group and I got in there. Mm -hmm. And I finally after they she went she went around around and people started bashing. Not much. A lot of people were defending us saying, listen, this is good. But she said, you're a slumlord. These guys are slumlords. They would tag my name in there. You're a slumlord. I'm like, slumlord. So so let's back up for a second here, though. So we decided to convert the Airbnb to just a traditional long-term rental. That's correct. So, I'm sorry. So, right, I forgot that part. So she bitched and bitched and bitched about it being an Airbnb. Okay. So let's turn it into, and we didn't do that for that reason. We did it for no, other, we, other strategic reasons. It wasn't reasons. making money for us. So we so, decided to turn it So we decided to turn it into a long-term rental, which according to, to her is what she preferred. Right. Now, yeah. it so <laughs> happens that this tenant was it's not a, a good tenant. He's tenant. horrible. 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 Not paying his rent. He's letting no, the lawn no, no, grow no. up. No, no, paid his well, rent. Paid, paid six months up front, but yes. then he's it's been a challenge since then. But he's letting the lawn get overgrown. It won't mow oh. it. Won't let the town mow it. Won't let us on the property to mow it. Our Set, property management company. He's told our property management company, if you come on <laughs> the property, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna attack. Like you can't come to my property. It was it's and they've called the cops. It's really been a horrible situation. So here she but the point was she was totally bitching about it being a short term rental. Right. So now she gets her wish and it's a long term rental, yep. just a normal traditional rental. Yep which is what she was begging for. Yep. And then now she's still mad. So then she went on social media again and started to just gripe and gripe and gripe about us again. And I said, okay, I jumped down there finally and said, look it. I said, you know, you've got two choices in a situation like this. You could be supportive of a small company that's run by a husband and wife team that have sacrificed everything 
to improve neighborhoods in this community for over 20 years and have risked everything we've owned to build this and help other people and employ people locally. Or you can sit back and be miserable at us, which is clearly what you've chosen to do. I said, in this particular case, we were losing, we, we bought a house to fix. We got way over our heads because there was so much to do to make it right, to do it correctly. Once we get over our heads, we decided to make it a short-term rental, which we made it a clean, safe place to live. And now we made it a long-term rental because you griped and bitched so much that we actually ter- put a long-term tenant in there. And now you're still griping at us. I said, you, you have a choice. You can support us or you can keep treating us like crap. And, and, and she, <clears throat> they, everybody like second and said, yeah, 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 yeah. And they finally left us alone. Like she, you know, she's probably like, oh but, my God. But she's also, comp- she's also griping about us doing all this stuff, but the laws are not on our side in New York. Not that, at all. We was, couldn't even go the on the property. About, that was the other thing about that is we would have loved to have done something, but the laws are not on our side. Not even close. So listen, we spent a long time talking about this one yes. story. Obviously we don't like her and you know, <laughs> still don't want anything nice, nice to happen to her. That's for sure. But my point is you can have neighbors that cause massive chaos, but you have to decide how you're going to handle that as a real estate investor. Now, those are rentals that we have with neighbors that are not so nice. We have plenty. We have now remember we've done over 1100 houses and we own over 50 rentals. So we, we have, we have more than the average person does. So we're going to have more bad experiences, experiences than the average person does. But by and large, Most I would say nice. 90% yeah. of our neighbors are really, really good. Maybe right. even 95% are really good. I agree. But the ones that are bad, oh my God, are they bad? They can make your life hell. They can make your life hell. So listen, speaking of making your life hell, I want to do our Gen X moment right now. And I want to play a clip for a movie. I don't know if you know, but this is the worst neighbor you could probably ever, ever have. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie before, but let's see if you can recognize the movie from this clip. So what do you think? 750 grand, huh? We'll fudge the numbers a little. Yeah. We're just a little bit nervous. We've never made this kind of investment before. I know, I know. It's a legal description of building. It's a wooden building with windows. <laughs> <laughs> so we rent the studio for a thousand and one bedroom for twelve hundred. Thirteen hundred. You should go up and down. Brand new gas stove, disposal, microwave. <laughs> You have to remember that this is an investment, Patty. It's not just an investment, it's our home. Mr. Palmer, right? Goodman. Hi, Hi. Carter Hayes. Well, you've done a beautiful job here. When can I move in, Drake? You don't even know him. You don't even know his real name. It isn't Carter Hayes. Mr. Hayes? Mr. Hayes, is that you? Mr. Hayes! How about that? I hear Melanie Griffith's voice. Yeah. But no, I don't know what that movie is. Pacific Heights. Oh, yeah. If you've never seen it, it is a, it's a thriller. It was back in 1990, so I'm laughing because that was- Yeah, a, I was like 16. It was a, it was a, <laughs> it was a, it was a, uh, Three or I, th- I think it was a three unit they bought in San Francisco. It may have been a two, but I think it was a three unit they bought in San Francisco to fix up. I'm hearing them talk about the rents a thousand and 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 seven fifty or something like that. I'm laughing because now here we are, thirty some years later, those rents are quadruple that yeah. or quintupled oh, yeah. that. They're e- enormous. In oh San my Fran. god! And they they paid seven fifty for the house. That same house is probably seven and a half million dollars now. Right. So just funny how real estate appreciates, and you mm-hmm. see it when you watch back, look through the next things. But he came in and knew all the laws about being a tenant. And because of that, he actually took advantage of them, something fierce. I mean, he, that's why they arrested the, they arrested the owner. And they, if there's one line he said in there, he said, sir, if he's in the house, he has rights. And so he had rights that he knew his rights. As it. So he was their neighbor in the same exact house. So nosy neighbor, he was a horrible neighbor, but that's our Gen X moment for today. There you go. So look, let's some, talk about some pros and cons about, you know, working with neighbors or not working with neighbors. You mentioned this, you mentioned one before about catching more flies with honey than vinegar. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you get, you get the neighbors on your side, they watch your back. They can let you know if anything sketchy looks like it's going on. You know, one of the things when you have a dumpster outside is people like to to throw away all their couches and mattresses and <laughs> all their stuff in your dumpster, <laughs> all their stuff in your dumpster. So they can, you know, let you know if anything like that's going on. Yeah. Um, I think one time we had a dumpster that had caught on fire and the neighbor told us, called us and told us about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I forgot um, about that. Yeah. Stuff like that. But you're, you're setting the tone from the start. Again, you're putting your best foot forward. And you wonder how dumpsters randomly catch on fire. Oh, some kid, I'm sure, threw a lighter or a match <laughs> sure, or something yeah. in it. This looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> you want to you get them on your side. And like you said, have them watching your back. But the other thing that can happen, too, is um, you can learn a lot from the neighbors. You know, you can learn about 
the neighborhood. They yes. can let you know, you know, how long ago the roof was replaced because they re might remember that information. Yeah. Um, they can also help you find potential buyers because, you know, you can you can let them know, hey, this house will be ready in six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. If you have any family or friends that want to live in the neighborhood, make sure you let them know about it. Yeah. So there's there's all sorts of different pros that that you can do. It's free marketing. You know, you're letting the people in the neighborhood that you like to work in yeah. know what you do. And we have bought many houses. There's that there's that series of houses that we own right now in Rotterdam. We own three in one little and one right next to each other. Right there, we own the yeah. one on um, I yeah. want to say O'Brien, but DeForest. We, yeah, we DeForest. own we own, we own back to and they're both they're both yep. now rentals. But we own that, and we flipped like four houses in that one neighborhood. Oh, more than that, because people yeah. know who you know, right? Right, they know who you know, or, yep. or not. They don't know who you know. They know what you do. I'm sorry, they know right. what you do. So you're you're marketing for yourself. I'm thinking about the one story that we had that, um, the neighbors called. We did we didn't introduce ourselves to the neighbors until after. So this was more of a reactive. But but here's this is a good this is a good story. We actually had a property that had, uh, we had finished the renovation and it was sold. And now we're in the escrow process. So we haven't officially closed yet. We had about a week to go for closing. We get a phone call from the cops. And they said, hey, can you meet us over at so-and-so house? I said, sure. I wasn't sure how they knew I owned it because it was under a company name, but they knew. They researched it back and they, they had my home number. So he called and we went over to the house and they said we were told somebody was living here. And I'm like, uh, okay. We haven't sold it yet. <laughs> I walked through the house and I, I became acutely aware that I was the only guy in the room without my hand on my gun. I didn't have a gun. So I was like, uh, okay. And they said, okay, the house is clear. House is clear. Cause I had to let them in. So we walked out. We're in the garage. We're in the garage. Everybody's talking for like 10 minutes. I'm talking with the cops. I'm bonding with them because they're neighborhood cops. And I just seen what they, you know, some of their kids were on sports teams that I, that I coached. And so I was just trying to make connections and never hurts to have law enforcement on your side. And all of a sudden the one cop looks at the other and he points to his eyes with his fingers and he points to his eyes, almost like an army sign. Yeah. And he points up and he looks at me and says, he mouths the words, get out. And I'm in the garage. I'm like, Okie dokie. So I left the garage and the garage door, when you open a garage door, it opens in the springs and it covers the roof or right. it covers the ceiling. And in that ceiling was a hatch and there was a guy hiding in the hatch. They must've heard him move while we were all sitting there. They jumped up. They, the, the cop put his head up in there. And when he, cause he's told, he said many times, get down, get down. They had their guns drawn saying, get down, get down. And he would not respond. Then the one cop lifted the other cop up. He saw his head and he went, Wah! I heard him scream because he was terrified. Because the cop screamed or the guy screamed? The guy, the, the, guy the, screamed. the cop, the cop screamed. Oh. You know, because, because there's yeah. a, when you put your face up and the guy's face was like three feet from his face. Yeah. All of a sudden there's a human that has not been responding to I've you. I've heard this story a million times that I don't think I ever knew the cop screamed. Okay, so he's like, ah. And he, he, well, on the way down, he grabs him and pulls him through the hatch. They threw him on the ground. They put him in cuffs and they took him off. And we're like, what in the world's going on? We find out later that he's been bathing in the pool. That's how the neighbors saw. So the nosy neighbors were good in this case. Right. The neighbors saw him bathing in the above ground pool that was at this property. And pissing on the side of the shed. It stunk <laughs> like urine, something fierce over there. So yeah. he, that was his toilet over there. I don't know where the other mess was going, but I don't even want to think about that. But it stunk really bad there. Yeah. And they took him away. And we found out later that he was part of the roofer's crew. Right. The roof, so he knew it was a vacant house. His girlfriend threw him out. We called the owner of the company who we'd done many deals with. We still work with the guy, yeah. actually. Not the guy that was in our house, but the owner the of that owner company. The owner of the roofer, yeah. And we said, what's going on? He said, I left him in jail. Yep. I said, for what? He left him in jail for like a month. Yeah. He, he, need, he needed to get uh, bail to get out. And he left him in for a month back when they had bail in New York, back when life was normal in New York. But they left him, they left him in jail for about a month. Yeah. He said, he said, you're on my, this, these are my best customers. Yeah. And you went and did this. But what we did was the next day, I didn't want the new buyers going through and doing a walkthrough and having the neighbor go, Oh, somebody was just living in your house. Right. I didn't want that to come out in conversation. So I, I said, we sent pizzas to the three neighbors that were right closest. We sent pizza right. and said, let's just kind of keep this between us guys. And everybody was good. We sold the house. We walked out and yep. never knew if they knew about it or not. But yeah. So in that case, you know, neighbors didn't have our number, but it was better that they called the cops than the cops called us. But the neighbors, again, they're looking yeah. out for you. So if you if they know how to reach you, it's a better thing. Right. So. Remember the house that we did um, outside of Saratoga? Um, I forget the name of the little town, but it was it was the first house we ever lost money on. Yeah. And there was what had happened is we finished the renovation oh, and then we yeah, were going through the say. sales cycle. Yes. And the neighbor came over to the potential buyers and were like. You the know, well, the well's bad. The well's bad. The well's bad. Yeah. Now, her well was bad. It didn't mean our well was bad. So had we like looking back, 
had we gone and introduced ourselves to her like during the renovation process, yeah. we probably could have headed that off saying, oh, okay, th- that's great information. We'll make sure that we, you yeah. know, look into it. We'll have it inspected and we'll make she sure we get it Karen. taken care of. She came out and right. scared our buyer off. Right. But, yep. but had we met her yep. and put our best foot forward, that may have never happened may, and we would have kept that have, buyer. Yeah. May so. not have so. Yeah, hopefully when you when you spend time getting to know neighbors, less likely to call card enforcement. Um, you know, it, the, some of the cons are, though, it can open a can of worms. Yep, it can. It can open a can of worms because all of a sudden I'm thinking about the house we did in uh, Scotia. Scotia that we, I just always remember we did the open house and it was when? Late fall. It was October 31st. It was on Halloween day and it was snowing. And we had a pool and that we hadn't closed yet. No, it was snowing in the pool. In the pool. I remember <laughs> yes. that. And so during this, during this house, we didn't own the house for even a week. We, we introduced ourselves to the neighbor. Hey, how you doing? And the whole time, all he kept saying was, yeah, your fence is six inches on my property. I, I like to get that fence moved. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's true or not true, but I'm, I'm just going, okay, I'll check into that. And I just kept him at bay until we finally sold the house. And I, I didn't know what to say because I was like, you don't have a survey. You're just telling me you think the yeah. fence. And, you know, it would cost thousands of dollars to, to move, move a fence, fence yeah. six inches. Mm-hmm. And that's just on your word. So that opened a can of worms. He was, he was yeah. not bad about it. But he was definitely annoying. He kept saying it over and over again. And I'm thinking he'd probably been saying that. He was just, sometimes they hope with a fresh new owner because they think your pockets are just crazy deep. Right. That you're just going to fix everything they want to fix because they're a neighbor. Right. So we didn't do that. But that's right. something that could happen too. So, yeah. So that could be, they can be disgruntled. But, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, you, you might, you might inherit problems from previous relationships. That neighbor may not have liked the other neighbor that was there. And they may have had a fight over the side of the driveway or an easement or people uh, hold on to those grudges. They do. And they want to, they want to pass it on. So, yeah. yeah. So I think kind of in closing, you have to decide if you want to, you know, meet the neighbors or not the nosy neighbors or meet the neighbors. They're not all nosy neighbors, but they're, they're knowing neighbors. My neighbors know a lot, which yeah. is good. So I think, you know, you have to decide, is it a cosmetic flip or is it a full gut? And, and just to be fair too, like, even if you're not, a nosy neighbor. I mean, people do generally like to know what's going on in their neighborhood. Yeah. Especially if, you know, especially if you're not in a rural area and your houses are close together. Yeah. You know, people, people talk, they get to know each other and they, yeah. they like to know what's going on. I would want to know what's going on. I think you, you decide, you decide if you want to introduce yourself. If you're just doing a cosmetic flip. You'll be out of there in two weeks or three weeks. Yeah. Maybe you don't have a, don't even have a dumpster in the driveway. If right. you're just doing really, really light stuff, maybe it's not quite as necessary, right. but if you're doing something a little heavier, there's a dumpster, there's contractors that are going to be, you know, filling up the street and filling up the yard with their trucks and might be a good idea. Yeah. Might be a good idea. Also depends how far the property is from you. Yeah. If you're going to drive by on a regular basis and be able to see it yourself, maybe you don't worry about the neighbors, but maybe if it's a long ways away, it's good to have a set of eyes or more eyes right. on the property to know how to contact you. If they see something that doesn't look right, they can let you know. Yep. So again, there's pros and cons of each method, whether you introduce yourself or not, it really depends on the property, but I still stand behind. I'm an advocate of putting your best foot forward and, and, making good by that. I would tend to agree. So that was this episode of the Fearless Future podcast, learning how you can deal with nosy neighbors and make them your friends. We hope you enjoyed this. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. If you liked it, make sure you click that like button and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content.